So, Run The Jewels released their new album and fourth album, Run The Jewels 4. And I'm gonna be honest, I've never been a, like, a huge Run The Jewels fan as a lot of people have been, but I still respect them because they've been making so much noise with the Run The Jewel albums, which were highly popular back in the day. Run The Jewels is one of the few artists that I see using their space you know, in the music landscape as talking about you know political stuff because I feel like a lot of people shy away from there and definitely Run The Jewels is not the type of group to shy away. I feel like LP and Killer Mike are definitely one of the leading voices of hip hop when they're talking about political stuff. They're super confident in what they're talking about and I think they present some really valid points. The first track Yanking the Brave made me feel like I was like a, like looking at like a cinematic film really and just like the cover art for the tracks in here you could see like them in the car you know with the shoe lights and all that stuff. It looks like a gangster movie was filmed. You know I like how they're comparing themselves as villains. It feels like they're wrecking the whole place that they like they command the streets it feels like super super gangster the production is it hits hard i think lp's goes i think lp's flows is just crazy killer mike as well killer mike really really takes the spotlight in a lot of these tracks in this album the next track will allow we get to hear the first two features of the entire project with greg nice and dj premier i think dj premier just it is it is crazy how much the beat doesn't sound like dj premier i like how the beat just like it, it easily fits in with the whole run the jewels atmosphere and their production it's like it's it's playful it's kind of weird it's experimental you know it doesn't even sound like a boom bat classic it sounds like a boom bat beat but with like run the jewels just like elements sprayed on it and uh, yeah this track basically continues more of the you know criminal mastermind game that lp and killer mike plays in this album you know the theme that they play in this album and really the production in this album was actually pretty cool i like how they used like some vocal samples as well as the next track out of sight you know, featuring 2 chains, which has like this little vocal female pitched up um, sample playing and it sounds really like boom bap, really like 80s. I like how hard the drums hit in this point. Also just the flow of Killer Mike. I think like just as I was saying, Killer Mike steals the spotlight in a lot of these tracks. I think the biggest element of why, you know, Killer Mike steals the spotlight is his lyrics. I think that his lyrical ability in a lot of these tracks is just really, really big. There's even some tracks in here which he goes a little bit more personal, like in Holy Kalana, which he talks more about his PTSD and he talks about his life with the streets, you know, living with PTSD and how traumatizing the events were for him with the drug dealing and all that stuff. And also, just looking at the people that just talk about it like it's nothing like it's like like normal but for him it's a huge major thing that really shattered you know a big thing in his life and also lp lays some pretty interesting rhymes in this track you know i think his verse like this is like the bar after bar in his verses are just really entertaining how he did his rhyme scale it's just so precise it is just so interesting looking at his lyrics as well as killer mike as i was saying but just his wordplay his flow his delivery in this track it is pretty good it's really playful you know at the beginning of this track i wasn't like feeling it completely i think it was like an it was starting to be like a mad track but really what made this track super unique was the switch up with the little you know chance with the give me the light and all that stuff just had so much energy it just, it just made my attention spam just go 100 percent you know on that half and on that second half and also just killer mike delivery as i was saying killer mike with his flow is grasping all my attention it is insane this i think the second half was a really did a really nice job you know of just making this track really good a track that i think had a pretty weak chorus really is goonies versus et which you know i was thinking the same thing are they referencing the movie but really they're not referencing the movie they're referencing something else but uh, yeah uh the chorus i think was a little bit just lazy i guess you could say just didn't feel like that special in this track but what really grabbed my attention in this track was killer mike talking about how the news media can be giving you fake news how it could be like hypnotizing you and also how twitter can be such a toxic place and how they can be you know be giving like misleading information and i know it's nothing really new since he talked about it like in his speech last week when about when the george floyd incident happened i was talking about the injustice you know and all that stuff and how cnn wasn't giving hope you know for 
the black community and just for people overall and just spreading them with fear. And really a bar that caught my attention a lot was me and my tribe, we on an iller vibe. We accept the role of the villains because we've been villainized. I like how he's talking about of how black people can be villainized and all that stuff and being blamed a lot with uh, murderers and all that stuff when it's just complete nonsense really. In a Walking in the Snow, we get to hear more social commentary. You know, we get to hear just their different approaches, you know, how they're talking about different themes in this uh, track is really interesting. How LP mentions about, you know, kids in prison and all that stuff and the pseudo Christianism stuff. I like how Killer Mike discussed about, you know, what was going on with the George Floyd situation, you know, the, you know, uh, the police brutality thing, you know, you know, the racial injustice with black people, you know, the George Floyd situation which is a major thing and I'm surprised he even talked about this situation you know in this project and you can really tell how precise they want to be how they want to spread the message out about uh injustice with you know with black people you know racism bigotry that is uh spreading around this world you know how he wants to spread the message how he wants to just make his point about it you know talking about how we how you know they need to we need to kill our masters how how we need to kill our masters how we you know we don't want to be slaves to the slave master we want to be like ourselves. We want to have, you know, liberty to express ourselves. And we don't want to always be uh, slaves to the slave master and how we have really little, how black people have really, you know, little like liberty, you know, how they feel controlled, how I guess we're talking about, you know, uh, white people. I, I, I think he's trying to talk about, you know, the white cops that have uh, kind of like the slave masters, how they're treating, you know, the black people wrong with the George Floyd thing. He's probably comparing the white the white cop that killed George Floyd as a slave master and sort of like treating him like a slave, like, you know, mistreating him, like hitting him and almost just killing him. But in this case, he killed him. You know, unfortunately, I think it's a really, really clever bar and just clever thought that Killer Mike lays in this track. So the next track, Just, we get to hear Pharrell Williams feature, which I barely heard of this guy. You know, this guy just made so many so many hits and all back in 2014 back in 2012 and all that stuff but i just haven't heard about this guy such a major thing i've heard him in features though but just it is a surprise to really see him in this album killer mike starts his track talking about you know how the government takes a lot of money from taxes you know there's a bar in here that really caught my attention which was make a dollar government they want a dozen dimes you know just how unfair you know the taxes and all that stuff can be you know also talking about the people that want to knock you off your grind you know uh, I think he said something about the petty that wanted to knock you out because you're grinding, you're shining, you're making so much money, you know, you're making all the things yourself. Like really in this verse, you could see Killer Mike just really just giving it all in in the political spectrum, just talking about how people can think they're above, you know, black people, how they, they, they mistreat them, how they want to knock them off their grind, you know, how they want, basically jealousy, just pure jealousy, how they want them just to knock them off the grind. So I was saying just because they're jealous and they're basically making how you know this person is basically making so much money and, and he's black and this one knock him off the grind i also like how um lp is talking about you know the murderous cops you know the cops that kill black people and stuff for basically no reason the, you know and they still making a living they're still in that department even after all the charges they've been against even how basically police department knows about how you know this person has been involved in so many so much criminal activity they still let him in even though how much damage he's made to the black community you know to some innocent people people really they never look back killer mike and lp discuss about uh, their childhood how their parents weren't necessarily the best you know how uh, lp struggle with his dad issues you know his parents issues and how you know mostly killer mike struggled more with his mom issues you know how his dad and mom really didn't get along and how there was like a pretty big separation and just you know how much of a, of a frustration it really was for him of how just how hard it was for him to live like that and they also discuss you know about you know never looking back always going forward but also questioning themselves what if we can't move forward and back and just we're, we're kind of stuck like what do we do they're they're questioning themselves that you know like how rough it is just to not know which direction to go i think the best verse to really explain most of this track is killer mike's verse when he says never look back you will only get bitter if you get bitter you'll never get better never get better you'll then you'll never get bigger never get bigger then you will never make cheddar the next track ground below really just takes a departure from the political stuff you know the deep stuff 
about the cops and all that stuff, injustice and police brutality, and really going more, I guess, on the more fun, playful side. Run the Jewels makes this more of a rock and rap sort of crossover, which I know it has been done before, but I like how they do it here. There's so much energy just used together. It's kind of like a short track. It's two minutes and 30. I know it's like an average length of a song, but for me, it just feels short. You know, it feels like they could have made like a longer song. And this one just really goes into it's like some funny bars that um, LP and Killer Mike um, do. Mostly LP with the donut hole bar. It's a really funny track. You know, it is, they don't take themselves really like serious uh, in this track. I like how it's funny. It isn't like, it isn't that, that serious like the previous tracks, like the departures I was saying. And pulling the pin, we get to hear more of the struggles of Killer Mike and LP. Uh, mostly, you know, Killer Mike talking about his depression, his suicidal thoughts, you know, how he struggles with mental illness, which the, with, you know, with the death of his mother, you know, how tragic that must have been for him. And also um, LP, you know, talking about how he feels at least trapped in a cage. You know, like how how it feels to be like isolated, you know, how how hard it must be for him, you know, because how how he feels, you know, he's controlled by other people and then pulling the pin, just that title feels like he's gonna blow up because of how much stress he's feeling, how he feels that other people are controlling him, how they feel like they basically stuffed a grenade in him, you know, how all, the, all these things are just, are just giving him, you know, peer pressure. In the final track, A Few Words for the Squiring Fod Radiation, I think is a pretty nice wrap up for this album, you know, because I'm pretty sure they're implying that they're about to get shot by a firing squad, I'm assuming, because they're criminals or gangsters, you know, they're playing read this album just, you know, features a fictional narrative with the Yankee in the Brave, which is apparently a fictional TV show. This song, you know, as I was saying, how it's representing of how this is basically their last words, you know, a few words before they die for the firing squad. And really they share they share like some emotional words, you know, how LP couldn't really be the best. A sibling, you know, how he was struggling with the drug dealing thing, you know, how there was problems with him and his brother, you know, how he tried to get his brother out of uh, problems and all that stuff, and really how Killer Mike had to cope with, the, you know, with his depression after his mother passed away, as I was saying earlier in the track that we discussed. And also, Killer Mike really gives a really insightful, you know, uh, just perspective of the drug culture and all that stuff, really talking about how he is a victim of, you know, taking drugs, just not being himself, how his wife doesn't really want to jump he wants you know his her husband back you know how he feels that like he really wasn't there for his wife how he was almost slowly being eaten up by the drugs of how you know depressed he was with his mother's passing and also he discusses about you know being black in America and how hard it was for him and also how his mother unfortunately died as an addict you know how he pursued almost the same addiction that his mother had you know after her passing and the rest of this track is really like some nice jazzy horns playing that are just super intense this drum break that almost sounds like it's building up to something these nice strings that are playing in the background it's really building up the setting making it super dramatic like this is the end game like this is a finale and also i like how it ends like with the sample with the yankee and the brave television sort of thing um you know saying like it's the credits you know how i guess the whole show ended but uh, yeah i like this album a lot i like how it wrapped up as i was saying it discusses so many themes i was saying with the political stuff which it isn't anything new but i think they take a deeper approach in this one talking about you know as i was saying the black community you know the injustice mostly in this album i felt that killer man to the spotlight in a lot of these tracks you know really when i when i heard a song and i heard killer mike on it it was so hard to not like it how it was so hard to resist when he's trying to deliver a message how he just gets straight to the point how he's comparing to it and also i really did like you know lp's rhyme i feel like i'm not talking about lp a lot in this album because i feel like you know as so i was saying killer mike just stole the show he stole the spotlight but uh, yeah the beats as so i was saying they're playful they're really fun to listen to they feel like almost like old school met with some early 2010s um, music. I don't know why. It just feels really cool. Uh, there is uh, there's some tracks in here which has like this little dancey 808, which you, it sounds like you can play in the club, only like, club music almost. And uh, yeah, I like the production as I was saying. It was really, it is clearly mixed. I like that. Uh, I don't know if LP produced some of these beats. I know he's a producer. And he's produced most of Run the Jewels' major tracks. He probably produced some of these tracks. And if he did, shout out to him. He did a really great job producing tracks. And also, and also all the producers involved with this album did a splendid job really so yeah what do i give this album run the jewels 4 8 out of 10 solid album really liked it so yeah did you guys like this album did you guys hate it let me know in the comments down below did you guys enjoy this video leave a like down below also please subscribe turn the notification bell on everybody and uh, yeah i'll see you guys next time
Peace out, everybody.